Also this morning, we are now hearing from Robert Gates himself as his bombshell book is about to hit the stores this week. In that book, the former defense secretary says the only time that he really saw any passion from President Obama when it came to issues of the military was when it came to getting rid of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Welcome, everybody, to a brand new hour of America's Newsroom. I'm Martha McCallum. I'm Bill Hemmer. Good Monday morning. Gates hitting President Obama pretty hard on his leadership of the military, saying, quote, the only military matter apart from leaks about which I ever sensed deep passion on his part was don't ask, don't tell. For him, changing the law seemed to be the inevitable next step in the civil rights movement. He presumably was also passionate about health care reform, but I wasn't present for those discussions. End quote. Our chief White House correspondent, Ed Henry, North Lawn now. Strong words now from one who, well, he was in the president's war cabinet for years, Ed. Hello there. That, that's right. Good to see you, Bill. You can uh, tell uh, when you read the book and go beyond the excerpts that have been out there before uh, that uh, Secretary Gates in this book also reveals a transition document from the Obama transition team in 2008 where they were privately saying the key would be to show the public, show the world that the incoming president uh, wanted to win in Afghanistan. But Robert Gates suggests over time he saw that the president, uh, we, he says there was no passion there to actually back it up, get behind the strategy. Uh, to win. He was pressed today, Robert Gates, in his first live interview on NBC's Today Show uh, on why he didn't speak out sooner about that lack of passion. Take a listen. I talked to his chief of staff and uh, Rahm Emanuel about the need for the president to take ownership of the war. Uh, and, and I did talk to the president about the need to speak out about uh, the importance of the war and, and why it was important for the troops to be there. Now, Robert Gates said that he regrets that in, uh, some of the criticism has been sort of taken out of context, in his words, but he stood behind the thrust of the criticism, saying that while he believes the president was, has been a strong commander-in-chief, he was behind most of his decisions, uh, he thinks the president was not fully behind the strategy in Afghanistan. Well, how was the White House defending the president on this charge? Well, Ed? you saw Robert Gibbs, the president's former press secretary, yesterday uh, on NBC's Meet the Press, vigorously defending the president by saying, look, he was concerned about about mission creep in Afghanistan. Uh, Robert Gibbs saying the president did the right thing, as Robert Gates suggests in the book, by surging more troops, over 30,000 of them, to Afghanistan in late 2009. But then Robert Gibbs, Gibbs said, look, the focus uh, is what the American people want right now, which is to get troops out of Afghanistan in the long term. Take a listen. Barack Obama was, and I assume continues to be skeptical of our military ability to solve Afghanistan. We have been in Afghanistan now longer than we have been in any foreign land conducting a war in our nation's history. Now, bottom line is the administration was dealing with these revelations when it first started, the details of the book first started leaking out last week. Uh, they're hoping to turn the page on it, but with Robert Gates uh, now embarking on his media tour for this book, they're likely to face more of these revelations. All right, more to come on this. Ed Henry, thanks from the North Lawn there. Martha has more now. Well, let's bring in someone who served side by side with Robert Gates, KT McFarland, Fox National Security Analyst and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense in the Reagan administration. KT, good morning to good you. Good morning. First of all, uh, it, it, when you hear Robert Gates say that the only two issues that he ever witnessed the president really passionate about were when there were leaks about what the administration was doing and also when it came to the issue of don't ask, don't tell with regard to gays mm -hmm. in the military. Those were the only two things that he saw a real passion from the president on. What do you think about that? Well, you know, Bob Gates has been in those cabinet meetings. He's been in those White House Situation Room meetings for 40 years with Republican presidents, Democrat presidents. He's been through other wars. He was in the White House during the Vietnam War when we worked together on Henry Kissinger's staff. So when he says something like that, that the president wasn't passionate, didn't believe in the cause, and in other parts of the book says things like, didn't really think the mission could succeed, and yet at the same time was willing to send men and women um, to fight and die for a war that he didn't believe in, he didn't think could win, and he had no passion for. I understand when Gates has said that the president reviewed things, he had questions, he didn't believe some of the advice he was getting from his military, fine. But why then send fat tens of thousands of Americans to fight and die in a war that the president didn't believe in? I think that knowing Bob Gates, knowing his reputation, Martha, for
for integrity and patriotism and as a straight shooter, Gates is sending a message and he's saying, you know, this president wanted to get out of these two wars and it really didn't matter to him whether he lost those two yeah, wars. I mean, I, I, my mind just goes directly to why the surge then. I, I yeah. mean, I think that you can understand Afghanistan is an extremely complicated situation. And I think that if, if the president had articulated that he felt that it was not winnable, that mm -hmm. he wanted to bring everyone home, that he thought there was another way to deal with this problem. You know, why send one right. more human being over there yeah. if you, in your heart of hearts, think that they, may get, they could be killed for potentially for nothing? Well, I think Gates, in, Gates talks about the memos that were going back and forth in the transition when President Obama took office. And Obama wanted to win in Afghanistan. That was the good war. That was the war he right. was in favor of. But what we now realize from the Gates memoir is that Obama really is what a lot of people thought. He's a typical anti-war, anti-military, far left-wing liberal. And as much as he may have said nice things about the military, made some good speeches, the fact of the matter is, like you said, Martha, he was willing to send American men and women into harm's way to potentially bleed and die for a cause he didn't believe in and he didn't think would succeed. Boy, leaves everybody with a lot to think about. Uh, KT, yeah. thank you very Thanks, much. Martha. We'll see you soon. So now that you've heard from Robert Gates, what do you think? Was he right to write the book? Send us a tweet this hour at Bill Hemmer and at Martha McCallum, and we'll share some of your thoughts a little later in this program. It is true that every interview he's done, he is making news. And I expect him to make more news tomorrow night when he's with Sean Hannity here in primetime on Fox. And one we'll of the big issues, you. you know, the answer to perhaps why he wrote the book while the president was still in office is because there's work yet to be done in this agreement with this Afghanistan. And perhaps there's room to make that agreement something that can be a little bit more forceful and workable uh, mm -hmm. and make some of those losses, you know, for something. That's right. uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Seven minutes passed. Thanks to KT on that. Five